Alright, so we're coming back here to the back compartment with the cooling fan and belts. We're going to inspect the uh, fan shroud, make sure all those screws are in place, no cracks, everything looks nice and clean. Here is the breather lines that go from the fan shroud back to the main rotor gearbox. Make sure those are those are nicely fastened. We're gonna come up here. And this is the oil cooler. On the right side, all you have to do is push to open and look in there. You can barely see it in the camera, but make sure there's no debris, nothing that will prevent the oil cooler from cooling the oil. So nothing's in there, just let go, and that section looks good. Here's the upper frame. Look for any cracks in the joints and the tube, any nicks, bends, corrosion, you name it, you're looking for it on this frame. If it collapses, that's not going to be good for you. Alright, upper frame goes all the way across. Look at each joint coming down. Just fall all the way around. Here's the, uh, this is the tail boom each corner there's a pal nut, jam nut, make sure the torque stripes are on that, follow this down, there's another one and there's two more, one right here and one up there, it's kind of hard to see. So now we've inspected the upper frame, we're going to inspect this push-pull tube from the, or for the tail rotor, looks nice, nice and smooth, no corrosion, no cracks, jam nuts are on there nice, pal nuts, torque stripes there, Check for check for roll. This is good, but there's no upward or sidewards movement, and that's what we want. This right here is the tail rotor bell crank. It's freely moving. Jam nuts right there. Okay, nice and smooth. It's not wobbling around on us. That's what we want. Here's our wiring harness. Make sure that's nice and secure. Goes all the way up. And here's that other jam nut on this back right corner. Time to inspect the belts. There's on the R44 there's four V belts that go from the upper sheath down to the lower sheath. And uh, I'm not sure how good this will be on film, but uh, we're going to the way we're, what we're going to be looking for. We're going to be rolling the belts with our right hand. Put your right hand up here and just start cranking. And this is going to allow the belts to turn. See? And you can just bring it back now. You're checking for any separation in the belts. Each one, as you're turning them, you're looking for this bond line. Let's see if we can zoom in on that. See this belt? There's a bond line. You're checking each one of these belts as you're turning for the bottom line, make sure the belts are not coming apart. You're going to be checking on the opposite side, which you cannot see. You'll, you'll need a flashlight. You're going to be looking down in the black hole across to the inside of the belt on the other side. And um, you want to make sure that nothing's really being dug in on the belts um, from this lower sheath. Right here is the lower sheath. You'll make sure that the wear, wear marks are all even. There's no nicks that may tear into the belt. Still right near the belt, this right here is the upper bearing. Right there. You're looking to make sure that's that's not slinging out any any grease on this side or on the back side, which is kind of hard to see on the 44. Uh, the guy with the teletemp, the orange teletemp right there, that is the uh, clutch actuator bearing and teletemp, note nothing has been uh, darkened in and no grease is being slung out. You want to give the clutch actuator bearing a good nice little shake, make sure there's no excessive movement. This one's really tight. Here's the actual motor, the clutch motor, which basically drives a screw in, uh, pushing the drive shaft up or down, tightening or loosening the belts. That's on there nice and secure, nice safety wire. So here's the belts once again. We're not done back here. Here's the belts. Follow the drive shaft back a little ways. And right here is the middle flex plate and yoke flange. So we're going to use our right hand 
push it right here. And just keep doing this and follow this all the way around. There's four jam nuts or pal nuts. I'm gonna make sure there's no cracks, no bends, and the flex plate or yoke for it. All right, we were done with the main rear gearbox and belt area, so we close those compartments up. We also close the right side of the engine uh, little panel there. And so we're now we're going to check for the fan. Now the fan, once again, the 44 a little bit harder to inspect. See this nut right there? Make sure that the nut hasn't moved by looking at the pin and the marks. There's a black line that goes through the center of that nut, lines up with the yellow line with the black arrow on the end, and that pin that goes through the nut lines up with the that line, that yellow line on the very bottom. Check for the cracks all the way around the fins. The 44, once again, is very hard to inspect, but you need to do your best. A nice looking bird here. We're going to check the skids, and how we do that, we're going to look on the very bottom. There are five shoes on this 44 and you want to check to make sure those skid shoes are keeping the actual skid from touching the ground so there's one two and there's the third one you're looking for the general condition of the skid make sure there's no cracks especially right here at the base of the strut here's another shoe continue walking down the skid Here's our wheel point where we put the wheels in to transport it around. And there's another skid shoe. And another one right underneath, underneath the rear strut. That's it. You do that on both sides. So walking around this, you're checking the general condition. Make sure the safety pins are in the doors, both top and bottom. Static ports are clear. Just walk down the tail boom, make sure all the antennas, rivets are in place. You don't want any of those rivets backing out on you. Here's our strobe light or anti-collision light. Make sure that's nicely secured, it doesn't twist around. Here's what we call the candy can. It prevents people from walking into the tail rotor when it's spinning. Here's the stinger. Now if you haven't flown this aircraft in a while, or any aircraft, run your hand down the bottom and make sure that the tail the stinger has not been drugged. If it has been, you know well, you know it's been drugged. Make sure that the paint hasn't been scraped off. Here's the vertical stabilizer. Make sure that's nice and intact. No bends, no cracks. And here's the horizontal stabilizer. The faster you go, the more efficient that these stabilizers are and the more stable the aircraft becomes. Alright, here's the tail rotor gearbox. Make sure the safety wire is on top. It comes around the sight glass plug make sure that fluid you can see fluid at least halfway up on the sight glass depending on how level you are that will depend on where the fluid level is as well here's the push pull tube that we were moving earlier comes all the way up the this this tail boom and comes out the very end check the rod end it's good there good there here's the tail rotor bell crank here is the tail rotor blade you're looking for, especially on the 44, look for any cracks in the trailing edge of this blade. And you're also checking for anything on the leading edge, like any holes, cracks, chips. You're checking the general condition of this blade. Make sure these jam nuts or pal nuts haven't been moved. Here's the uh, pitch links. Jam nuts, pal nuts, rod ends. Turn them, they should turn, they shouldn't have any lateral or vertical movement, which they don't. Here's the tail rotor control. No excessive play there. Here's the front side of the gearbox. Note the teletemp, three of them have been colored in. Get back down with the flight, make sure those have moved. More safety wire. On top is a little sight glass. Now this sight glass, you're gonna move the, turn the tail rotor and you're going to see those pal nuts, the flex coupling, you're going to see four of those turn. You're checking one.